Thanks for tuning in to our coverage of the 2023 Ontario Doubles Crokino Championship. We are joining a match already in progress at the quarterfinal stage as Reed and Nolan Tracy are taking on Jason Malloy and Seth Frank, also known as Seth from Bowling. The first round went the way of the lower seated Tracy brothers and they will have the hammer here in the second round looking to double their advantage. Seth starts out with an open 20 attempt here which he converts. Reed Tracy answers. Three straight 20s to start off here. Oh, a nice little touch 20 there by Seth Frank. And Reed is able to pick that up. Malloy now plays a nice little shot. Pushing it into a bit of a no-man's land. Follow through 20 chance. It doesn't really go anywhere there for Nolan. A chance here for Seth Frank just to roll away a bit toward Nolan. And that's very well handled. Good shot through the pegs. This is left again in a difficult location here. Nolan looking perhaps for a self-assist play. Bumps that up into a pretty good spot. Seth will have to go after the, uh, the natural disc on the outside, leaving Reed Tracy a 20 chance. After a bit of deliberation, a really nice little roll puts it clean in front of Jason Malloy. Oh, and that's fortunate that uh, that Tracy couldn't secure the 20. If he had, that would have left, uh, that would have forced Malloy onto either side. Bit of an awkward angle. As that one rings off a peg, it causes some uh, some trouble here. This this is a uh, a complicated moment here. That one looked like it caught Peg first on the way in. Very unusual. Seth Frank leaning over, trying to make just a single takeout. And that's left in a ricochet 20-able position. As Reed may look for it, and it glances just wide of the hole. Jason Malloy and Seth Frank, this team from the Extra Pint Crokinaw Club in Voorheesville, New York, are taking a little bit of extra time to sort out exactly the best, uh, the best mode of play here. Nolan is in a difficult spot. <laughs> there is definitely no easy 20 here. He's really left with not very much. Just uh, the team opts just to bring it in a little bit, but that one got away from him. And may actually have moved that black disc into a place where a ricochet 20 would be available if the lane is clear. Ooh, that just rattled around in there a good bit. A chance here. Is there a chance? I think that black disc is too far away from the hole for the straightforward combination. But perhaps the angle in off of the closer black disc to read. Great tap up touch 20. Really well executed there. Now needing something nice. That's a good solid takeout. So now up two points to none. The Tracys have an opportunity to take a pretty easy tie with a takeout on the disc in the 15. Reed seems to think that the double is gettable. That's close. It may be there. The if if it gets there, the issue is that the disc that Nolan would be hitting first would likely be catching that peg closest to the other black disc, and that could lead to disaster. So going for a takeout 20 jams it. And the steal goes right back. This quarterfinal match is tied at two points apiece. And now we'll see here this really nice slice 20 from Seth Frank. Well taken there, and that really helped to build their team's early advantage. And even though it came down, they were just 
just barely able to hold on at the end. The first shot missed there from Reed Tracy leaves a takeout 20 chance. That is nailed by Jason Malloy. Just coming up a fraction short is Nolan. And Seth will look for a rollout here, I'm sure. No, he goes straight for the follow through. And what a wonderful shot from him. Reed Tracy's able to get his team on the board, but easily answered there by Malloy. Nolan sends that one wide. It looked like he double clutched on the shot. Was, uh, I think he may have wanted to reset there. Seth from bowling looking across here. Trying to find the best, uh, the best line to take this out. This is a little awkward. As Jason said, it's paramount to keep the shooter on the board, and that is what he's done. That may have been, uh, may have been a little bit fortunate there, as the players have a bit of a chuckle, but uh, that's still a great result for the team from Voorheesville. All right. A good little tap-up play there. Looking for another short ricochet 20. Trying to play the self-assist. Malloy could ruin this. Skips right over the hole. So maybe a chance here. Nolan doesn't like it though. Does he see? Maybe just going for the pure follow through and coming up just a fraction short. Hangar 20 opportunity for Seth Frank. Oh, he made a bit of a mess of it. Now a good hangar chance for Reed Tracy, which he can't convert. Awkward leave here. The simplest exit path is blocked by one of their own discs, but they almost get it to go. Again, very little to shoot for here for Nolan Tracy. Maybe this thin slice is available from the far left. He checks on his chair. That did not catch the black disc. That's going to be an invalid shot. Seth Frank will miss. The disc on the far side, that may not be impactful. We're getting down toward two shots left each and a nice takeout 20 there. Now we're starting to see that miss come into a little bit of play as that rolls too far. Nolan Tracy has a chance to tie the 20 count here. Just missed. This is also left a little bit awkward. But I think really all that uh, Seth Frank needs to do here is remove this disc. Doesn't even need to keep his shooter on, but that's an okay result as well. And a good attempt at a double takeout there. I'm not sure exactly what was available for Reed and Nolan there, but now this should be fairly straightforward play here for the team in the Extra Pint Coconut Club. Nolan just looking across to the side. Now thought for a, a fraction of a second about going through their own, decided against it ultimately. Now just uh, a simple, oh nothing to do at all here as uh, Seth Malloy and Jason Frank are up a 20. Oh my goodness, and Seth Frank adds a circus 20 onto the top of it. Look at that. Comes off of the peg to the right of the disc he was aiming at. A, a fabulous little shot to finish, and just a fundamental shot right at the very beginning of the round from Jason Malloy. And this here is another good looking shot. Seth Frank nailing a follow through there. A couple of big shots from him, gives his team the 4-2 lead, and Jason Malloy is off to a flying start with the open 20. Nolan answers cleanly, gives the fist pump, he needed that one. And nicely handled by Frank, easily set through four shots, and Malloy is the first to miss. This does leave a takeout 20 chance for Tracy, needs to make certain of either takeout or 20. Both would be ideal. Makes the takeout and rolls very nicely. Well controlled there. Just about all Frank could do is make that takeout. Reed Tracy brings that in a little bit. Maybe a follow through. 
from Malloy. He was going for it, and it skipped off the hole. And that one rolled over a little further than Nolan wanted it. I think he wanted to, to contact the object disc a little bit straighter, a little bit fuller on. There is an angle in chance for Seth Frank here. Oh, but he hits it too full, even on the outside of the disc. And now a chance for Reed to hide one, and that's pretty well executed. Oh, just caught a piece of it, not enough. Nolan punishes him with the open 20. 3-2 is the lead for the Tracys, as that one can't get into the middle. Another hide executed pretty well by Reed. As Malloy makes a strong takeout through Hogan's alley there. Never looking for anything huge. Frank needs to bring this one into the middle and he's looking at a very acute angle here. Just trying to bring it in, but not getting the takeout is not going to do them any favors as Reed Tracy just pushes it straight back out. This round is running out of steam here, running out of chances for Malloy and Frank to create something and that will just about do it as Nolan Tracy puts the dagger in there. They are going to, the Tracy brothers are going to take this round and tie up this quarterfinal at four points apiece. As that one goes right through the house, it's 4-4 four, four in the race to nine. As we see, just really good control from the Tracys. They were able to, uh, to keep play focused on the outside of the board and hold on to their lead there. Nolan sends that one past the hole, a little bit to the left. Definitely a 20 chance here for Frank. Oh, just a fraction under hit. So, the takeout 20 chance returns for Reed, but he can't take it. Now, to Malloy's strong side, as the lefty slides over to his left, looking for the takeout 20, which he gets. Nicely taken there. Nolan Tracy answers with the open 20. Advantage clearly here to Malloy and Frank with the hammer, but still lots of broken out of play here. And Frank hits that one into the next county and leaves an open board for Reed who can't connect. Malloy looking for the touch 20 from this angle. Goes for the takeout as well and gets neither. Nolan may see a takeout 20 chance here from his right hand side. Jams on it. Frank lining up the shot at the disc closer to him, powers it toward the hole, off the line. Is that close enough? I'm not sure. Reed Tracy drops the 20, no takeout. So Malloy and Frank will have a chance to sit three discs on the board, although Malloy is looking to take this out through the rings. No, tries to play a tap-up shot. What an effort from him, and it comes up just short. If Reed likes this, Nolan could take out the disc farthest to the left as we see it, and that's exactly what he's done. This is very risky to go through his own, but there's a line through Hogan's Alley. Looks wide open through there. Testy shot, and he rings it off a peg. So Reed Tracy, a chance to take a commanding lead, can't take it. Now maybe a run up, a little bump and run opportunity. Very well taken by Jason Malloy. That brings the advantage back towards his team. And now it's the Tracys who need to create something as we head in toward the final shots of this round, at least into the last third of it. Frank looking to blast another one, perhaps. Gets more air behind that one. And this is certainly awkward. The best play here may actually be to peel, but he leaves that on. And fascinating development in this round. This is a big round at four points apiece. The winner of this will take a big advantage in the match. Malloy just pushes that one simply forward. Now the question is, can Nolan make the angle in 20 off the disc closest to him without removing the other white disc? That is the most important question here.
So if he removes his own white disc, then he's gained nothing. Let's see what he goes for here. Uh, can't bring it in far enough. And this, you hear the command from Jason Malloy to stay out. Even losing his shooter would not be harmful. This could be close enough. Can Reed Tracy bring this back off the peg? This is a huge shot. It would all but win the round for him if he can make it. Reed Tracy looking for it. Can't get it. Now a wide open takeout for Jason Malloy. Should put them six points to four in front. He's taking his time over this one, but it's made. So Malloy and Frank take a six points to four lead on the back of this fantastic angle in tap up shot. That is really, really beautiful. So now Seth Frank will get us started here in round number six. This is an absolute must get for the Tracys. As they do not, if uh, Malloy and Frank can take a point or more from this round, they will be within one round of a spot in the semifinals. Good start here for both teams. And Nolan knocks it down. We are through four perfect shots. Good one from Frank to make it five. Reed Tracy continues the pursuit of the moonshot. That one bounces in for seven. And the moonshot in the quarterfinals. Eight straight 20s to open up the round. Frank is the first to miss. An advantage here to the Tracys. They have it on the board. But that's jammed, leaving another potential ricochet tap-up chance for Malloy. Just missed the line by a fraction. That was a really good effort. But he couldn't make two of those, as Nolan can't get that one to go. A precarious position here in this round. Frank gunning for the follow-through. But it also doesn't drop. He gets no takeout with it either. Reed Tracy lining this up, drives it by. Opportunities are going to be fascinating here in the second half of this round, but Jason Malloy rings it off a peg. So the Tracys now tied in the 20s, had a chance to sit three on the board, but an error from Nolan keeps it to two. Very difficult chances here for Seth Frank. The bounce back 20 off the disc in the 15 is very precise. The angle in from the left side is very precise. And that one just catches a peg, stays to the outside. The disc in the 15 may be easier to work with for Jason here. Let's see what he can manage. Malloy second guessing himself. There's no takeout coming, but that's a great 20. To go 5-4 in front, Nolan would love to answer here, but it comes up short. Chance at a double takeout on two discs. Frank looking maybe at rolling in. That's a pretty good spot. The easy path to it looks blocked by this white disc, but Reed Tracy looks unperturbed. Good shot just to get to it. The position here does favor the Tracy brothers. This is the final shots for each team. Jason Malloy needs to really manufacture something. If he can, they will be in a stellar position. Not sure exactly what he's lining up. I don't think a single takeout's really gonna do much. And now it's left pretty wide open. If, if Nolan Tracy can make the double takeout and stick on the board, they're there. Goes into the 15, or excuse me, into the 10. That disc must be a 15. And the Tracys take a tense sixth round. And we're tied up at six points apiece. So a race to nine has become just a race to three. And Reed Tracy comes up short with the opening effort. Malloy tried to give that a lot of gas there. I, that, that felt misdirected. Now sitting two discs on the board of the Tracys. Frank pushing for another follow through 20. He's been so close on so many of those. Now what will Reed look for? 
there, there's a touch 20 available to be sure and that is what he gets pushes his own disc further away from the hole which is certainly beneficial for now Jason Malloy doesn't like his looks here doesn't look like it anyway and now Seth Frank is going to have to waste one across the board. This may not be easily gettable, unless it's, it's maybe sneakable on the outside. Certainly through Hogan's Alley is clear. Good hit by Frank as it rolls into the five. Reed Tracy is all too happy to just stick to that disc on the outside. Malloy brings it in, but sends now they're sitting two tens on the board, down to 20 with Hammer. Lots of play left there. Nolan barely gets that one to go. A, a little bit of an awkward takeout through the pegs, easily handled by Frank. He just trying to keep things as difficult as possible. At some point, they will look for a 20 or a double, but Jason Malloy makes it difficult. That's a great bounce back 20 from him. Now Nolan is going to need to look to carve this in. Just a little bit stopped on him. Oh, disc in the 15. Tense play here and a really nice rollout from Frank. Reed is going to have to work hard to get this disc back into the house. And he can't get it. So Malloy. He's to try to see this one out through the pegs. He's got it there. A decision time here a little bit for Nolan Tracy. As, does he come in or play the hide against Frank? I think the angle for the hide is, is much tougher than the angle for the, uh, for the shot to come in. And he's left it pretty available here. No hide accomplished. Frank controls his pace and gets right through the pegs. Good shot to come in there by Reed Tracy. If Malloy can manufacture a little roll away there, that's beautifully executed. Precious little now for the Tracys. Just stuck right sort of in the middle. Now Frank just needs to find the takeout path. This is the last shot tied in the cup. I think the best, uh, the best line here, the easiest line may actually be to take it out through the pegs. bit of an issue here. I'm not certain what's going on, but Frank returns to it. He's lining it up from the far right and makes the takeout. So by a nickel, Jason Malloy and Seth Frank go one point away from a spot in the semifinals off the back of that fabulous Ricochet 20. Rebound off a peg. Really very nicely struck. Jason Malloy misses with the opening shot of this round and Nolan nails the short Ricochet 20. Beautiful stuff. As Frank responds with the open 20, the advantage to the brothers as Reed knocks that down. You know, he can't convert there. So just, just left uh, a little bit of a tweener shot. Nolan happy to stick right to it. And leave Seth Frank maybe a slice 20 from the left. But this is so tight. This is a really precise shot, and it just wouldn't go for him. So now a chance for the Tracys with the hammer to be up a 20 with two on the board. And that's where they stand. The American team needs something large here. Lining up perhaps a double takeout. Oh my goodness, and a natural disc rings off the hole itself. And we're left here with not very much change. This is already a difficult situation for Frank and Malloy. As Seth from Bowling lines up a takeout through the pegs. Tries to bring it off a peg, but it sends itself straight off the board. Reed looking at the bump and run. His lines are pretty obscure here. It's either up the left or through your own. And a little bit of a flick off his own disc 
It settles very nicely. Three twenties to one for the Tracys. Malloy tries to hide there, but this is pretty accessible through their own disc. Just catching a piece there is Nolan Tracy. Frank trying to make something happen there, and that was a pretty good effort, honestly, just to get all that bounce. Reed Tracy knowing that they need nothing extravagant here, playing with the lead and the hammer. Jason Malloy will need to try and contrive something. Gets a lot of bounce, a lot of action there, but nothing speaking for it. Three discs in play for the Tracys, and three shots left for both teams. As the Tracys try to send this match to a one, a single round decider. That's a good double takeout, but Reed does have a takeout 20 chance if he wants it. He, may, he only needs a single takeout here. He just needs single takeouts to keep it going. Pushing for the follow through comes up short. Malloy to cut the deficit to one, he gets it. But this is still very much an uphill battle as the Tracys get two discs in play pretty spread out. Frank would need a double takeout 20 to even force Reed to shoot, and that will not do that. So the round is one on the board. Reed makes the final takeout, and this match has gone to an 8-8 tie. That was a great short ricochet 20 on Nolan's first shot of the round, and a little bit fortunate with that touch there. But eight points apiece, one round to decide it all, and Nolan Tracy starts it off by coming up well shy, but within the rings. I think the easiest way to go about this is to get the touch from the outside, but Frank just barely gets it. My goodness. Importantly, he moves the disc away from the peg, but Reed Tracy comes up short here. Some misses, some curious shot decisions at the, in the early stages of this deciding round. Malloy trying to remove this natural disc. Of course, the black disc on the board is in the way of the natural takeout path through the house and a big mistake as Malloy and Frank lose both of their discs. Now, if Nolan can secure the 20, that'll be huge. He does not. Still lots of Grokono to play here. Frank went for the touch 20 and couldn't get it. So now at least a touch 20 chance for Reed Tracy. He's going to take just that going up the line and he gets it. <laughs> the two are in agreement. That was the, the right play to make and I think they're correct. Lots of time to clean up the, uh, clean up the mess on the board. But that 20 lead is forever. And that takeout jammed by Jason Malloy means that the Tracys have left three discs on the board. They do not have the hammer, but they do have a 20 advantage. That's really all right. That's that's good there from uh, from Seth Frank. They need many more like it. Still no doubles left here. No doubles left available, and I think that's still the case after that shot from Tracy. Malloy and Frank will need some big shots here. And that won't do it. We are into the second half of this deciding round. Now, Nolan looks like he's eyeing the double tap up 20. That was an aggressive shot choice, but it was very well made. Frank is going to need to pull a rabbit out of the hat here. And I think he's sort of wisely choosing to go for the disc in front of him. That was a thin cut, but he brought it in at least. Now Tracy's, the Tracy's will need to look for a double takeout eventually. I thought that might have a chance of getting it on the fortunate bounce. Malloy will certainly look for a 20 here, which he gets. Still the Tracy's in pursuit of a double. Malloy and Frank in pursuit of the same. Good solid takeout there. It is getting down to do or die time here for Malloy and Frank. 
The American team needs to pull something solid out here. Love a takeout and a 20 if possible. Even if they get it though, it's a simple shot for Reed to, uh, to sit four discs on the board. I think that's the only thing they're, they're seeing and that's what they're lining up. Frank needing a short follow through 20. Doesn't get it, but does make a double. A fortunate double. Reed Tracy calmly makes the single takeout. For now, that's all they need. I'm not sure if there is a ricochet available off of this disc, but that's what Jason Malloy is lining up. Catches a peg on the way in, and now the two discs are right next to each other, the two black discs. Is the double available? Double not even desired there. Smartly taken there. Smartly, smartly taken. They do not need to push anything, the Tracys, as we are through. We are into last shots each. Malloy drawing up a razor thin double for Frank. Time, they need the double and to stay in the 10 to have a shot. And that will not do it. Both black discs off the board. Reed Tracy doesn't really even need to shoot here. I think he'd be wise to, though. He slides to the left side and nails the 20 to put a dagger in it. A 10-8 victory for Reed and Nolan Tracy over Seth, Frank, and Jason Malloy. They book a spot in the semifinals against John Conrad and Connor Reinman.